what's happening? What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome to my weekend review. I had an awesome weekend because I got to do something that betters you as a DJ and it's something that I recommend that if you guys have a chance, if you guys have days off, I recommend that you guys do this. So on Friday, I actually had a photo booth gig and this is actually my first time actually working the photo booth. As many of you guys know, we've incorporated a photo booth. I worked with a company and I got a photo booth and I actually haven't been running it. It's been my sister who's been kind of doing the photo booth thing. I actually have never ran the photo booth. So this was my first weekend actually going out and working the photo booth. I did it completely by myself and it was really easy. Photo booths is kind of a cushy gig, but the actual reason why I was excited was because I was working with other DJs. This whole weekend was kind of a weekend of inspiration. I wanted to actually listen to other DJs. And this is something that I recommend you guys do. Because what happens is when you start doing a lot of mobile DJ events, you kind of fall into this bubble. You start creating this mold, this kind of structure that you follow at all your events. And that's something that's hard to avoid as a mobile DJ because it Again, you're doing a wedding, a wedding, a wedding, a wedding. You kind of box yourself in because you're only hearing yourself. And one of the things that I miss about working at nightclubs was the fact that every weekend would kind of be an inspiration because I would hear a dope mix and then I would kind of go home and I'm like, man, how did he do that? Let me try to see if I can actually do that same mix. I want to say I want to rip off their set, but what I'm trying to get to is that it's always a good idea to actually listen to other DJs and see how they work. That was my goal this weekend. Now this photo booth gig that I did on Friday is actually for a buddy of mine and it's actually Actually the guy who I bought the CDJs off of, DJ Richard Moore, and my friend DJ Stanley Styles was also there, and they were working a uh, Sweet 16, and I was working Photo Booth. Their setup, what they do, is completely different than what I do. So I figured I'd do kind of like a gig log. I don't want to say it's a gig log; it's more of a gig vlog. But uh, you guys get to see kind of the dancing, you guys get to see their setup, and you guys actually get to meet them. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about Saturday. Check it out. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on? Welcome to uh, Eagle Oak Country Club out here in uh, Farmingdale, New Jersey. Super close to my house. Uh, today we're doing a photo booth gig log and uh, check this out. This is what we are working with. Guests are coming in. I just finished setting up. Um, we have a white backdrop today. We have our props here. We have our photo booth touch to start. A couple of other little props. Masks and hats are in here. DMP printer. It's in an Odyssey case. I have my computer just in case I need to edit anything. This is what the prints look like right here. Nicole, Sweet 16. Alright, everybody say what's up. This is the team right here. Stanley Styles, Club Zone Entertainment, Club Zone, and we have uh, Richard Moore right here working the lights. Stanley Styles working the mix. Oh, yeah. you guys ready? Club Zone Entertainment bringing a nightlife experience to your private events. And yes, we are ready. <laughs> we are ready. This is a big setup, man. Big setup. It took us four hours. Four hours? Yeah, four hours. That's too long, man. You got to get that down to like an hour and thirty. We have the what, what size are the TVs? Oh, those are big, yeah. We got a special video too. We got the SZ, SZ. And you guys are on the stage. You guys bring this? Yeah. So uh, these guys don't play around when it comes to equipment. They have uh, VRXs, JBL VRXs. I think, I don't know what the subs are. Subs are VRX too? VRX is oh, STX. 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 STX 828. STX 828. Down there, duels. We also have a cumulus. We also have CO2. We also have trussing. We also have, uh, looks like some Chauvet lights, I think. Maybe those are like Intimidators 3 something, 375. The sweet 16 girl herself, make some noise for Nicole!
guys have it. What'd you think of their setup? Their setup was freaking nuts. And a photo booth, guys, working a photo booth is a cushy, cushy job. I wish I could do more photo booth gigs. You get no pressure. Um, the only stress I guess you might have is if you run out of paper you might have to change it on the fly. Honestly with photo booth what I've noticed is that you get kind of like hot moments. Moments where it just seems like everybody comes in and then you just completely die and then everybody wants to come back in. It was kind of chill and I actually got to enjoy my dinner because usually when I get served my vendor meal I'm like wah, 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 wah. when I did this photo booth thing I was taking my sweet old time. So that was cool. Let me know what you guys thought of that little uh, photo booth gig log and what you thought of uh, uh, Stanley Styles and Richard Moore's setup, massive setup, huge setup, way bigger than anything I would do. Now let's talk about Saturday. Saturday, I went to one of the biggest clubs, one of the only real clubs in New Jersey. This is gonna make me sound old, but back in my day, there was a ton of clubs around the area, and then eventually they all kind of went out of business, and there was this one spot that was known as Coco Bongo, and when I first started out DJing, I would always tune into the radio to hear the live transmission that they were doing live from that club. It was named Coco Bongo at that time. And it's weird to say this, but that's kind of how I learned how to DJ. I would tune in to listen to Alex and Sation do a live transmission. Mega Thursdays, they would call it. Tonight is party time. Tonight is everything. Salsa, merengue, bachata, reggaeton, hip hop house, R&B, rock en español, cumbia, vallenato, punta, quebradita. Vamos, un sancocho, mi hermano. <laughs> still in high school I would go to sleep and I would wake up like around one when he would hop on and I would listen to his mix eventually that club actually went out of business but then they kind of had a, a, a renaissance. They remodeled that thing, they rebranded it, and it's a completely different atmosphere, and now it's under the name of Barcode. And since I had this Saturday off, I hit up my good friend, DJ BPM, who's actually the resident DJ there, and I'm like, hey bro, let me come hang out with you. I wanna check out the, what it's like. And funny story to go off of that, when I started DJ, I worked with DJ BPM a lot, and we would work at these shitholes. We would work at like these horrible ass nightclubs. And then eventually, he kind of just got really, really good. I knew he was always good, but eventually uh, I got to the nightclub where he was working at. He left that nightclub. He was like, hey man, I'm tired of all these shitholes. I'm going to like bigger and better things. And he left. And when he came back, he was just a friggin' beast. He was a monster. But then when I stopped working at nightclubs, I didn't really see DJ BPM that much. I started doing mobile events and I would always see his posts. I'm like, man, I wanna go hang out with DJ BPM. I wanna see what it's like. I wanna see this freaking nightclub that everybody keeps posting. So this Saturday, I finally went and it was freaking nuts. DJ BPM, he opened and then he actually closed. And then we had uh, DJ David as he went in the middle. DJ David as is another big DJ here in the area. So get ready for this because this was an insane night at Barcode. You're gonna like this. Check it out.
you guys think of barcode that was quite the experience it was uh it was definitely kind of a a nostalgic night because this place although i've never been to it i've never dj'd it it definitely did play a role in me as a DJ because this was a place that I, I, I looked up to. I've always looked up to the guys that work at this place because they always had ridiculously insanely talented DJs working at this spot. And if you can take anything away from this video is that if you want to improve yourself as a DJ, if you want to get better, if you want to be the best that there ever was Pokemon reference. Go out there and listen to your local DJs. Listen to what's out there. You'll get a ton of inspiration and it really does make you a better DJ. After I left that night, I wanted to just plug my equipment in and just practice. I wanted to do some of the stuff that DJ BPM and David S were doing. So my biggest takeaway from this weekend was the inspiration. I got to hear a ton of great DJs. And now I'm excited for my next performance because I want to co incorporate some of the things that these guys were doing into my future events. Although I probably won't be able to incorporate much because uh, that nightclub is uh, is a completely different world. It's uh, It was insane. There's about 1,500 people there. Thank you bro so much for watching this little story time video. I know I did a lot of talk but I wanted to share this story with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my story. If you want to check out DJ BPM's vlog, he actually made a vlog about this exact same night. You can check it up in the card up there or up there. I forget which one it is. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of these, please thumbs it up. Subscribe if you're new around here. And if you really want to help me out, don't forget to turn on that bell so that you can be notified next time we do another story time video. Share with you guys a bit of my past. Thank you bros for being awesome. Stay awesome and I'll see y'all uh, probably tomorrow maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Bye.